Good evening. It is Monday evening as I'm doing this for you now. It's time for my weekly catch up um, on everything I've been watching for the past week. This should be a quite short one this week because I haven't been watching very much Naughty Me because the TV programme's one that I love. So kind of taking a bit of the time out of the old movies. Let's get kicked off with my awesome jumper before we... Sorry, jumper. People say, what's a jumper? Sweatshirt is what you call it in the US. Jumper is what we call it in the UK and Ireland. So look at this. Snowhemian Rhapsody. Snowhemian Rhapsody. How awesome is that? Bought this last year. It was quite expensive. I don't normally spend a lot of money on things, but Christmas Queen had to be done. So let me get my little um, screen recorder going so I can pop up what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm doing this to stop using clips as much. I do like to insert little clips here and there in my videos, but I'm trying to cut down on doing that for two reasons. One of which it takes bloody ages. Second of which I don't want to get slapped with copyright and get my video taken down. So let's get the old video recording going and we shall get into my letterboxed account. For anyone that doesn't use letterboxed, it, it's a really handy place to record all the movies that you've watched. Um, let me get into my diary. There we go. And let me see, I think the 20th was possibly where I left off. Um, it's a really, really handy place to, um, to store what you've watched and what you thought of it. And if you want to look back and see when you saw something or you're not entirely sure what you watched last week, perfect. I used to just write it down in my diary what I'd been watching, but when I joined YouTube earlier this year, it's going to be coming up on a year since I started on YouTube, which seems mad. I started at the end of January 2018 um, and everyone in America seemed to be using Letterboxd. So I got on the bandwagon because I hadn't heard of it till then. Um, you can add people as your friends. You can see what each other are watching. Um, you also can write reviews on there if you wish for movies, which I generally don't because I don't get much time. Um, but you can rate it a star system out of five as well. So. If you look in the description of my video, my link from my letterbox is in there. If you are a member and want to add me as a friend or um, if you want just to, to start one off yourself. Um, so let's get into it. Let me move over to make sure there's a space here. So number one that we watched in the last week is a movie called Juliet Naked. Um, I watched this because after October, I know it's the end of November, I had such a horror overkill. I am predominantly, I'm aware, a horror channel, but I love movies of all descriptions. Um, I love comedies, I love thrillers, I love dramas, I love movies. Um, horror just happens to be a genre that I watch probably more of than anything else. But um, I've started trying to watch outside the box a little bit. So Juliet Naked. Um, this one has um, Ethan Hawke in it and the guy from the IT crowd. That'll mean nothing to you in America. It's... Is it Dylan Moran? What's his name? The Irish guy that was in the IT crowd. Oh yes, I, I remembered last week. I can scroll down. Chris O'Dowd, sorry. Um, Rose Byrne and Ethan Hawke are the main people in this one. Um, let me read the little synopsis rather than try and, and surmise it for you myself. Annie is stuck in a long-term relationship with Duncan, an obsessive fan of obscure rocker Trucker Crow. When the acoustic demo of Trucker's hit record from 25 years ago surfaces, its discovery leads to a life-changing encounter with the elusive rocker himself. Right, what happens there is basically this guy, um, he's been living with his partner for many, many years. Um, he's mad about this guy, posters all over the room, knows everything there is to know about him. He's got like a, a page on... Like he had set up a page about this rocker and all the details about him and people talk about him, blah, blah, blah. This rocker's went into obscurity many years ago. His wife, sorry, partner, is sick of the sound of this. If I have to listen to one more thing about Trucker Crow, I'm going to scream. Um, and it becomes a bit of a bone of contention between the relationship. Um, she gets in the post a acoustic CD. Um, that is Trucker Crow's. Um, she opens it in error. It's his, it should be her part. Anyway, she listens to this CD. He starts a big fight with her because she listened to it without him, before him. It's quite funny. And um, he goes on to his site to write a review on the CD. And she is so angry at the ride that they've had and what she thinks about Trucker Crow that she writes a really scathing, horrible, 
nasty review about how crap it is and how he's like trying to cash in and he's a sellout, blah blah blah. Anyway, the real Trucker Crow actually sees her review and reaches out to her and says, I couldn't agree more. And they get to talking as email pen pals. The movie is about what happens, how that progresses, the relationship, um, her friendship with Truckle Crow, who she actually ends up meeting in real life as well. Um, and it's just a nice little story. It's a nice little drama comedy. I enjoy it. I like all the actors. Um, Ethan Hawke is, um, he's made to look older in this than he actually really looks. I suppose you could say he, he isn't made up to look gorgeous like actors are he's just put across as he is but I think they've made certain changes to him to make him look a bit scruffier um than he would in normal life but it's a real I liked it it's an interesting film uh, next one is the children act this is quite a serious one right it's got Emma Thompson in and uh, let me see Emma Thompson Fiona Whitehead Stanley Tucci is in this one Ben Chaplin Wendy Nottingham right so I'll just try and surmise it without reading for you Emma Thompson's character is a really important High Court judge. She is married to Stan Stanley Tucci. Their relationship has suffered over the years. They aren't sleeping together anymore. He's actually got it written in a diary the last time they slept together. I think it was eight months, ten months ago. Um, she is so tied on, up in her work because it is such an important job. She's making life and death decisions. Um, and the movie concentrates both on their marriage, failing marriage, and... Um, on a case that she has taken on where it, it covers Jehovah Witnesses that um, if you don't know anything about the background and the religion they believe that everything in the body is sacred and is yours and should not be given or you should not take from someone else's. A 17 year old boy is going to die, he has leukaemia unless he accepts a blood transfusion and his parents don't want him to have this and he by proxy of his parents agrees. Um, the sort of argument is he's not old enough to make up his own mind, he should be forced to have it. The other argument is he's months away from his 18th birthday where he could decide for himself anyway. So she's brought in to make the decision and um, whatever she says goes. Um, and she takes a quite unusual decision to go and meet this young lad at his bedside to talk to him. Um, this is called the Children Act and this is um, a background as to how a certain rule was brought into place. It's a true story but not a true story as in her character and her family situation is obviously all fabricated but the actual law behind the whole thing is very much true. Um, I like things like this, it was a really interesting story. Emma Thompson to me is a wonderful actress. She's gone from that position as a few other women have and this is something that really irks me. Um, women of a certain age um, don't get important roles. Um, now obviously in the comments there are exceptions, I don't want an argument about differences to the rule, but on average women have a shelf life when it comes to movies and once they hit a certain age they are not required for the same roles anymore. Um, but you've got men like Tom Cruise, who's obviously in his 50s. You've got, um, there's so many, like, you've got Jason Statham, you've got, like, Dwayne Johnson, you've got, I could go on and on and on about male, like, guys that are in leading roles that are the sex symbols that are mu much older than the women. A woman gets to a certain age and she cannot possibly play the wife or partner of a specific male, even if she is younger than him because she is not young enough in comparison. Um, that irks me, always has done. And I feel so many incredible actresses miss out for this reason. Then they get to an older age. Emma Thompson is, is at this sort of age now. And they do start getting leading roles in different kinds of movies um, as interesting multi-layered characters. And in this, Emma Thompson very much is that kind of character. Another example I'm gonna use is Jodie Foster. She's one of my favorite actresses. I love her. But since she's been very young, um, she hasn't got a lot of meaty roles um, due to her, her very public refusal to perform specific, to get naked, um, to to like play up to certain kinds of roles. And that woman, it's just, just her acting is impeccable. But um, now she's a bit older. Um, I watched this week also Hotel Artemis, where she stars in that one. Um, and she's that age where she's now starting to get interest in roles, which is awesome. Um, but anyway, that's me deviate and I apologise. So the Children Act that... Eh, let me switch on my recorder again. I'm going to stop doing this recorder thing because it's 
It's a pain in the arse. Right, so the Children Act. Then we go to the 22nd and it's like Mungo. I loved this movie so much. I'm going to read the synopsis here because I will waffle if I don't. Um, 16 year old Alice Palmer drowns in a local dam when her body is recovered and her grieving family buries her. That's, that's not a sentence. When her body is recovered and her, and comma, that's not proper grammar, her grieving family buries her. I'm sorry, I didn't write this. The family experiences a series of strange, inexplicable events centred in and around their home. Unsettled, the Palmers seek the help of psychic and parapsychologist Ray Kenney, Kemeney, sorry, Ray discovers that Alice led a secret double life at Lake Mongo, Alice's secret past, and it won't let me look at the rest of it. That was a shara shh, wasn't it? Right, let me try and put this into my own words for you. This is a found footage movie. Um, it's also done in a documentary style. I hear you switching off already. This is right up my street. I love found footage. I don't get the hate for found footage. Found footage, I know there's a lot of bad ones, but they can't rely on loads of the effects. They can't rely on on ominous music. They can't rely on things which other movies take for granted to set a scene. They're just working with generally handheld cams and they have to rely on the story and the acting and everything else is stripped away. And that's what I love about found footage. It just, it shows a real talent and a real raw talent at that. I love big budget movies as well, don't get me wrong, like the Halloween franchise and stuff. I love that movie, but found footage is, is where the heart lies for me. This is um, a found footage film. Also segments of documentary, inserted fake documentary akin to the Blair Witch, um, which I also like. It gets a big, big rap, but I like it. This young girl um, drowns in Lake Mungo um, and her family, it basically that happens right at the start of the movie and the movie follows her family finding out things about her that they weren't aware of. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, there's also a supernatural element to it where they are seeing her ghost uh, I mean, inexplicably in certain areas of the apartment but that's not all as it seems that's all I'll say um, and then this movie um, I really don't want to give anything away because I knew so little about this watching it this movie um, starts off very slowly I will admit it um, I like character build-up I don't mind something being what other people would consider slow I really enjoyed it but a lot of people may find themselves getting a bit bored for the first half of the movie because they're thinking nothing's happening but the last third of the movie just blew me out of the water it took it from being an okay movie that I was enjoying to oh my god to the fact that I was still thinking about it the next day I was telling my mum about it I want to talk about what happens with you guys but I don't want to spoil it um the end of this movie is just incredible I loved it um it's one that's not that well known and it's a sh I don't know why, because it's so good. So like Mongo, check it out. Um, as I say, if you find it being a little bit slow, persevere with it. It does it does take a big Next leap. Next is the one that I mentioned before with Jodie Foster, Hotel Artemis. Set in Riot Torn near future Los Angeles, Hotel Artemis follows the nurse who runs a secret members only emergency room for criminals. Jodie Foster um, is a nurse in a massive big hotel that she has converted into a hotel for criminals. Think John Wick, think that one. Um, but it's just her performance in this is incredible. Um, I love Jodie Foster, so I was always going to be biased, but I really enjoyed this movie. I thought the story was really engaging. There was a character that irritated the arse out of me, but that's that's just me. That's just personal preference. But I love the story. I love the acting performances. Um... It was a big budget movie, as you can imagine. Um, I like it. I'm not going to say it was fantastic. It was not fantastic, but it was a good watch. It was well worth a watch. Um, can't really say too much about this without giving away masses of the story. One of the major things that happens is, oh, I'll tell you who's in it. Um, Charlie from It's Always Sunny is in this, and he's an arsehole. I don't want to see Charlie as an arsehole. If you don't watch It's Always Sunny, he's also in Horrible Bosses. He's a little guy. Believe it or not, I am taller than Charlie. What's his surname? It's Charlie Day in... Oh, hang on, I'm scrolling down. Oh, his real name's Charlie Day. Sorry, his real name's Charlie Day. He plays someone called Acapulco. Um, so yeah, the main guy, the main bad guy that owns half of Los Angeles and all the properties 
gets hurt and he oh, he's played by Jeff Goldblum it's like wow this cast I love Jeff Goldblum um, and he's on his way to be treated by Jodie Foster and um, his son calls and wants her to hold up in the last room for him and she's got a very strict policy of rules that if she doesn't keep to criminals won't trust her they will drive her out she won't have a have a business but this guy owns her hotel so it's like if someone else gets injured she's only got one room left can she hold it for the 50 minutes it's going to take for him to get there um and there's other rules which she is expected to also break in the process of her day-to-day -day going about so i'll not say any more about that but hotel artemis i would recommend it <clears throat> next was creep 2 anyone who's on my facebook will know what I thought of this. Very much what I thought of the first one. Awful. People keep saying, what? You didn't like Creep on Creep 2? Why? I I don't get why you guys like it. Um, My husband and me both watched it and he, he was the same as me. He didn't like it either. When I say Creep, I do not mean the one set in the underground in the subway because that one's awesome. The first Creep is a guy living in the middle of he is a creep. He um, hires a videographer to... This isn't the one I watched, this is the first one. He hires a videographer to film him, a candid movie of him. He says it's the last few days of his life. He turns out to be a crazy, just halfwit. He's a stalker, he's responsible for carrying out a lot of crimes, which I won't go into. Um, and that one ends quite badly for the person that was filming him. Um, there's a lot more to it, but that's the basic premise. Um, now this guy, the second one, again, he hires a videographer. Let me see what it says. After finding an ad online for video work, Sarah, a video artist whose primary focus is creating intimacy with lonely men, thinks she may have found her the subject of her dreams. She drives to a remote house in the forest and meets a man claiming to be a serial killer. This sounds really good, doesn't it? Unable to resist the chance to create a truly shocking piece of art, she agrees to spend the day with him. However, as the day goes on, she discovers she may have dug herself into a hole from which she cannot escape. Now, if I read that synopsis, I would think, wow, that sounds brilliant. That sounds just my sort of thing. I said to someone, it just makes me feel uncomfortable from the start to the end. This guy is just so horrible. And they said, well, does that not mean it's doing its job? But it's not comfortable in a in a way I want to feel watching a movie. It's not just that I hate the guy. It's just something about him makes me not want to watch him. Um, there's one scene in the second one where he takes all his clothes off and he stood there. Uh, this is especially for a movie massacre with his tallywhacker out. No. Um, I just I just can't. I just I didn't find the storyline believable. I didn't find the acting particularly good. It felt like amateur dramatics to me. Um, the guy is just so unlikable and I know that's the point. I get that that's the point. He makes me feel, un he makes my skin crawl but not in a way that people like, let's just say Hannibal Lecter did. He, that was amazing. Or there's certain people that make you uncomfortable in a scary way and certain people that you just don't want to look at. And I just don't want to look at this guy because he makes my skin crawl. Maybe it's a personal thing. Uh, as I've already said, most people do seem to like these movies. I am not one of them. Um, the guy that stars in this is called Mark Duplass. I just don't like it, guys. I just Does anyone else not like it or is it just me and my husband? <laughs> I was saying to him that someone had said that, that, but that's how you're meant to feel. And he was in the background going, no, it was crap. I, I concur. Next one is called Look Away. Um, this one I've had on my to watch list for a while. Um, Sinister Cinema Reviews reviewed this one and sort of pushed me to want to watch it. Um, this is one, I'll read it to you. A timid and reclusive 18 year old high school student is alienated by her parents and ruthlessly rejected by her peers. Desperate and isolated, she confides in her own reflection and in the mirror she finds her imagined evil twin. Someone who supports her, encourages her, and knows all her secret desires. Then the girls trade places. Se repressed sexuality and a ferocious violence erupt in a dangerous sense of freedom. It is what it says. Um, it's very much as Jason from Sinister Cinema said. It's drama-based. Um, it does have horrific elements, but nothing 
I wouldn't say don't watch this as a horror movie because it isn't. Um, basically, the girl in the mirror is scared of nothing. She's sexy. She's ferocious. She's she is brave enough to do all the things that her shy, timid counterpart is not. Of um, the girl that plays the main actress is Indiana Isley, and she is so beautiful. Um, how she's possibly playing someone that's bullied at school by boys is like, no, no, that would not happen. This girl is stunningly beautiful. Um, but yeah, it was okay. It was, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't say go out, watch this, it's really good. It's okay, it, it passed some time, it was interesting. The, her performance was fantastic. It was very much drama based. If you're happy enough to watch something drama based like that, I feel you'll enjoy it. If you want something fast moving, if you want something um that's got lots of effects or is horrific or is thriller based then probably best avoid um the next one the christmas chronicles yes i'm started with the christmas movies um so a couple of people watched this i think rn from screen stars possibly did and poison pixie another channel i watch it's not a horror channel it's mostly it's lots of stuff um she does makeup skincare she does um, ghosty stuff. She does, she just does generally lots of stuff. She's a really nice girl. Um, she covered this as well. Um, so we sat down, me, Darren and Isaac sat down I think yesterday and watched this one. Um, this stars Kurt Russell, believe it or not, as Santa Claus. I love Kurt Russell. Um, Escape from is it LA or New York? Which one was it? The first one? The first one, is that LA? No, it's not. It's New York, isn't it? I love that. Snake Bliskin. Oh, I love that movie. So yeah, Kurt Russell is Santa Claus and um, it's about a couple of... It's about a little girl and her older brother. Her older brother doesn't believe. He's a teenager. The younger girl is 10, I believe. She does believe. They have lost their father, so the mother's a single mum. She works very, very hard. She works a lot of night shifts. And the little girl comes up with an idea of trying to film, to try to catch Santa Claus on video. Um, and she succeeds. And um, they meet Santa Claus. They meet Kurt Russell as Santa Claus. Um, and yeah, it's really entertaining. It's a nice little family Christmas movie. Is it in, on par with things like the Santa Claus, with Elf, with the Grinch? Nah. It's not as good as any of those. It's, it's entertaining. It's worth a watch. It's nice. But... It's a Christmas movie and it didn't make me cry. Christmas movies always make me cry if they're good. Um, this one was just, it was okay, it was worth a watch. Um, so yeah, if you want to watch a Christmas movie, that one's just popped up on Netflix recently. There is a bit of a surprise person, sorry I've just kicked that at the end of it. I'm not going to say who, but it made me laugh when they revealed a person at the end. If you've seen it you'll know what I mean and you'll know the relevance of the person. <clears throat> And lastly, last night I watched a movie called Blind Spotting. Again, looking for something that wasn't horror. So last night, Blind Spotting. Um, Colin must make it through his final three days of probation for a chance at a new beginning. He and his troublemaking childhood best friend Miles work as movers, and when Colin witnesses a police shooting, the two men's friendship is tested as they grapple with identity and their changed realities in the rapidly. <sighs> the genetrifying I don't know what the next word is because I can't read any more of it right I'm just going to switch that off so I don't have to think about it um this was enjoyable there were aspects of it that that I thought were a bit weak um this young man is sitting in his van and he sees a white policeman chasing a black I'm not going to say criminal because we don't know what he's done it's never covered it's never discussed but the young man, we can't see what's happening. All we can see is the white policeman just hadn't run past the front of the van. The The guy that's on probation is also black. Um, and it's very much pushed in this, which is obviously the case. Um, the whole thing about how some white members of the police force treat black people. And um, how if there is a person of colour and a white person and there's something going down that shouldn't be generally the black person will be the one that the cops shoot. Um, so this black lad runs past, the, the copper is running after him, the black lad shouts don't shoot, don't shoot and he's obviously got his hands up, we can't see um, and the policeman shoots him anyway thinking that no one's watching but this main Colin is watching and he sees it 
he's three days away from freedom. He obviously has a curfew. He has to be home at 11 p.m. every night. He has a... Uh, do they have... Ta do you have tags in America? The thing you wear around your ankle? It doesn't actually show it in this. But anyway, he's got a curfew and he's only three days away from being allowed outside a particular area and having not having to be in at 11 o'clock. Um, it was well acted, very well acted. All the performances were excellent. Um, there were aspects of the storyline that made me feel a bit bored in places. There was something that I didn't like. Um, I'll take you back to Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio in. Can't remember the girl's name. Um, is it Claire Danes? Um, and it was all, was it sung or rapped? The entire movie was done as a musical um, and it worked for me. Um, certain people don't like that, but I felt it worked. I felt it was, it was effective. This movie is mostly normal, but there are places in it where the characters rap what they want to say um, in certain situations that are very confrontational or very frightening or very intense. And he starts rapping. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? Now, I'm not a fan of rap, let me admit. Um, it's not my chosen music of choice. Music of choice? I do like Eminem a lot, but most rap I'm not keen on. Um, but yeah, there's there's bits in it with, with rap music that just, for me, didn't work. It just made the moment feel really... I don't know, it, it just wasn't effective, it wasn't realistic, it wasn't believable um, and it seemed like they were trying really hard to be arty with it and it just failed. Um, in some movies it works but in that one it didn't. Um, so that was the last thing I've watched this week, that's Blind Spotting, sorry about that, it's my husband. Um, I do say a lot that being able to do a video straight the way through without interruption is impossible in this house and I stand by that. So Blind Spotting. Um, on the TV this week, the reason I haven't watched a lot of movies, I'm a celebrity's on. It's on for an hour or an hour and a half every night. That's the one I told you about, the celebrities in the jungle that have to do Bush Tucker trials. Like a cross between Survivor and Fear Factor, basically. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Right, extreme close-up. I am sorry. I'll try and, um, I'll try and tie this up. So I've been watching I'm a Celebrity, which I really like. I've been watching that. I've been continuing to watch It's Always Sunny, um, an episode I watched recently um, about turning the bar into like a free-for-all just made me laugh my ass off. There was a water stainer on the wall that they also pretended thought looked like the Virgin Mary. So they tried to have it blessed and have a priest come in and they had people come in to look at it and stuff. Hilarious. Um, what else have I been watching Ink Master, been watching The Walking Dead. I started watching American Horror Story again, which I had sort of like abandoned over October. So I've still got a lot of that to catch up on. Um, but I think that's all I've watched on TV really. Ambulance, the one I spoke about last week that I love. Um, and like any documentary I can get my hands on. Forensic Files I watch just to death. If I want something short and easy to watch, Forensic Files it is. So yeah. Netflix, I'm really running out of things. I've almost seen everything on Netflix. It's, it's shocking. Um, they need to be putting more stuff on there. Apparently you guys in the US have a lot more than we have in the UK. But it's it's not good. They need to put a lot more stuff on there because the last decent thing I watched on Netflix was Cam, which um, I talked about in the sum up last week. So I don't want this to like go on and on because I'm sure you're bored already. But yep, that's me. I know I didn't do a recommends video last week. I don't know if I will this week or not. Um, nothing's jumped out at me enough at the minute to do one. Um, I don't need to recommend a really well-known movie because you all know about movies. So I just really wanted to talk about uh, Movie Massacre's podcast and my friend Chris's book. And I've done both of those. When something, What I'm going to do with Lisa Recommends, um, when something crops up that I feel really needs a, a, like people to know about it, I will do one. Um, but at the moment, there's nothing really that's standing out to me. I could be talking out my bum. There maybe is something I should be saying, but my mind is not grasping it right now. So I will leave you for this week um, for the catch up. Thank you for watching if you still are. Um, I really appreciate the support. I know these videos are long, but I, I only really am putting out one video a week at the moment. So it's not too long. Um, 
anything else coming up I will be doing vlogmas this year I'm trying to decide between one video a week with a few bits in it or one really short video a day can't decide which one at the minute but there will be something because I love Christmas a lot um there will be or three from the grave December episode on the 7th um the day before my birthday uh I'm not going to tell you how old I am it's depressing um we will be covering the movie Santa Slay which I haven't seen yet so that will be a new one for me and we've planned a lot of our movies for next year as well so we're very excited about that we're loving working together the two guys are just amazing they're awesome guys um I've got to know them a lot better since we started this we talk most days on messenger um, I'll tell you what's really good if you use messenger I never did this before instead of all the typing do a voice message so you can just talk and then the person talks back and it's great it's like a phone call but without having to be on the phone and the pressure of having to think of something to say you just come back to it whenever you get a chance and it's great and you know you can like hear the emotion and the laughter and everything in the person's voice and it's just really good I've really been enjoying it they crack me up they're, they're not right neither of them they're just so funny and can I say strange monkeys impressions are something else this guy can do an impression of anyone it's ridiculous he needs to include it in his show get strange monkey to do an impression for you it's amazing I mean his Jason Statham is is perfect some of the ugh, honestly right anyway there's my recommendation for this week get strange monkey to do some impressions for you because they're something else they really are something else so i'm gonna go now um i as i said thankful for you for watching i know these are long and drawn out um if there's anything you would like to see me do, if there's any questions you want me to answer, I don't usually do this. I know people do Q&As, but if I don't, but then you think, people, nobody will ask me anything. If you want to know anything, if you have any questions for me, if you have anything you would like me to talk about, any subject matter, anything I've ever spoke about before briefly, you want me to go into more detail about, um, any requests of any description, just let me know and I will do my best. Um, but yeah, that's it for me for today. Um, I will look forward to speaking to you guys next week with what I've been up to and what I've been watching. Over a night from Lisa Loves. <laughs>